Hey there, everyone, and welcome to Maho Mini. And... I have a terrible secret to share with you all. Despite how much I may seem to know about Magical Girls, there are still a bunch of big titles in the genre I either haven't seen or have only seen part of. In the first Maho Mini, I mentioned never having seen any of the modern dark Magical Girls shows after Madoka Magica. In the second, I admitted to never having seen the original Precure before. I've still only seen a couple of other Precure series, either in full or part, besides that. And that's not even the big ones. I'll admit it. I never actually finished Cardcaptor Sakura back in the day, and that's why I still haven't started on Clear Card yet. I've seen all of the first and last seasons of Sailor Moon, but due to a variety of factors, I skipped around a lot for the middle seasons. I know the whole series plot just from being in the fandom, but I still haven't actually seen a bunch of key parts from the later parts of Sailor Moon R and S. Heck, I'm not even sure I've seen a full episode of Sailor Moon Supers. I haven't seen Magic Knight Ray Earth or Wedding Peach. I've only seen small chunks from shows like Tokyo Mew Mew, Pre-Tier, and Shugo Chara. I saw the movies for Little Witch Academia, but not the TV series. You know, just, just a bunch of stuff you'd think a so-called expert would have seen, but there you have it. I say this, one, to reassure you that people on the internet who seem like they know a lot are often just good at looking things up, and two, to admit that one of the biggest gaps in my magical girl knowledge up to now has been Oja Majo Doremi. For those unfamiliar, Oja Majo Doremi, or Bothersome Witch Doremi, is a long-running Magical Girl series produced by Toei Animation. Its initial run of 51 episodes aired from February 1999 to January 2000, and Toei soon followed it up with several direct sequel series, two films, and a short direct-to-video series. The last of these productions wrapped up in 2004, the same year Precure stepped up to become Toei's new Magical Girl juggernaut. Speaking of, by the way, while Precure is technically the longest-running Magical Girl franchise, that run is spread out over multiple standalone series. In terms of Magical Girl series with the longest continuous story, Oja Majo Doremi wins that contest hands down, with its 214 episodes just beating out the original Sailor Moon's 200. Anyway, things were pretty quiet for Doremi after 2004, save for an, uh, interesting attempt to dub the series by four kids in 2005. I get to hang out with my best friends Mirabelle and Rayanne, and we all get our very own dream spinners, which make our costumes appear, and magical wanderers, which hold all our spell drops. And the only way to get better at casting spells is to pass the witch test. I'm learning how to fly, and it's so cool! It may be cool for you, but I'm still a green blob. However, there has been an uptick in nostalgia for the franchise in recent times. A new series of two-minute shorts called Ojamajo Doremi Comedy Theater began airing throughout 2019 to commemorate the series' 20th anniversary. Anniversary! Anniversary! And as of this recording, a new film called Majo Minarai o Sagashite, or Looking for Witch Apprentices, is set to release in May of 2020. What makes Doremi unique compared to its Toei stablemates, Precure and Sailor Moon, is that it is not a magical warrior show. While it has the same color-coded outfit designs and obvious merchandising elements that those shows do, Doremi has more in common with traditional Little Witch-style magical girl series like Sally the Witch and Himitsuno Akko-chan. There are no monsters of the week and very few serious villain threats in Doremi. Instead, the girls more often than not use their magic to help people with their day-to-day -day problems, much like the Majoko of old. It's an interesting hybrid of magical girl styles, and one which, as far as I can tell from what I've watched so far, seems to work beautifully. I won't be getting to Doremi on Maho profile for several years at the rate that I'm going, so I was stoked when today's Patreon sponsor, PK, 
asked me to look at the first seven episodes of the show. I've always heard such lovely things about Doremi from its fans, especially about the ways in which it introduces certain heavier topics to children. I've seen the following clip in particular passed around a lot on social media before, in which one of the girls calls out a snooty classmate on their racist BS. <laughs> So I was excited to finally get some context for clips like that and see what the heck the setup for all this is. The first episodes of Ojamajo Doremi introduce us to the titular heroine, Doremi Harukaze a grade 3 student in the seaside town of Misora. Like many magical girl heroines, she's a bit of a ditz and a klutz, but she's very enthusiastic and has a good heart. Moreover, she's always been fascinated with witches, and dreams of becoming one herself someday. So when she happens upon a creepy old shop run by a mysterious woman with red eyes, gloves, and a distaste for children, she knows exactly what kind of person she's run into. No doubt, this woman is absolutely... Masaka! As it turns out, when a human exposes a witch's true identity, the witch loses her human shape and turns into a witch frog. The only way for the witch to then regain her body at that point is for the person who exposed them to change them back. So the witch, named Majorika, insists that Dore may become her new apprentice and learn magic so that she can do just that someday. Doremi is, of course, excited and eager to start using magic right away, which of course leads straight into shenanigans. And boy does this show have some good shenanigans. In these first few episodes, you get several classic magical hijinks scenarios like body swapping, inconvenient clones, and struggling to ride a flying broom, but with a few interesting twists. The body swapping is voluntary, the inconvenient clone doesn't lead to the kind of havoc you'd think it would, and while Doremi struggles with her broom in classic fashion, her fellow apprentice Aiko has a much different approach to her broom. Oh yes, Doremi is not alone in her witchy endeavors. Over the first four episodes, we also get to know Hazuki and Aiko, two girls in Doremi's class who find out about all this magic nonsense and become witch apprentices as well. Hatsuki is a shy bookworm from a rich family who has known Doremi for a while, and Aiko is a tomboyish transfer student whom Doremi befriends in episode 3. Together the three have a low-key, blossom bubbles and buttercup dynamic, if blossom were the ditzy one instead of bubbles, which makes for some really cute and fun chemistry between them. That chemistry is helped a lot by the animation and character designs, which this series is also famous for. While the style looks simplistic, and it is, it's done that way to accommodate more lively and fluid character animation, similar to what was done in recent years with the Pokémon Sun and Moon anime. While the big heads and noodle arms in Doremi may seem slightly off-putting at first, they are put to fantastic use. So many standout expressions, so much great squashing and stretching and flailing, and of course the bobblehead proportions add an extra layer of cuteness as well. None of this over-the-top character work takes away from the show's quieter moments either. Director Junichi Sato of Sailor Moon and Princess Tutu fame is a master of balancing wacky magical comedy and sincere emotional beats. Sure, it's funny watching Doremi freak out over not being able to give a love letter to a classmate, but it's also a little heartbreaking. There are fun clone hijinks in the episode where we meet Aiko, sure, but 
A lot of that episode is also about getting to see Aiko's home life, where we learn that her mom left her dad when she was younger and that Aiko tries her best to support her dad so that he won't have to worry about her. Even the filler episodes are pretty well handled. Episode 6 features a girl in class who is a pathological liar, which is funny at first, yeah, but leads to a moment where her lies cross a line and she has to deal with the fact that she seriously hurt someone. Speaking of filler, while I expect there's more of it as the series goes on, shows this long usually can't get away from it, I was surprised and pleased by how little actually felt like filler in these first seven episodes. You get a little problem of the day for the girls to solve in each episode, but rarely is that the only thing the episode is about. In just about every episode, there is some thread carried over from past episodes that's used to push the overarching story forward a bit. The first three episodes introduce the main trio one by one and establish the rules for the series, such as the fact that witches need magic spheres in order to cast spells, and that spellcasting involves a lot of music and tongue-twisting magic phrases. Then a mishap at the end of episode 3 leads into episode 4, where Hazuki and Aiko learn about magic and become apprentices themselves. In this episode, the girls also remodel Majorika's shop and make it their own, establishing that the girls will all be running the shop and selling magical goods together. Episode 5 follows up on that by showing the girls drumming up business for the shop, while also fleshing out one of Doremi's classmates, Kota. Episode 6, the one with the pathological liar, is the only true filler episode of the bunch, and as I said, even that one is pretty funny and heartfelt. And while episode 7 focuses more on the relationship between Doremi and her younger sister Pop, it also leads into the girls taking their first witch exam at the end of the episode. In total, the girls need to complete 9 of these exams to graduate from apprentice status and become full-fledged witches. So showing what one of these exams is like this early on is a great hook to keep viewers invested in the girls' progress. If I had to give any negatives so far, the main one would be the merchandising elements. Part of what kept me from checking out Ojamajo Doremi sooner was that I've always found the design of the actual magical elements off-putting. The outfits are fine, though admittedly I'm not a huge fan of their big elf shoes. The obvious toy stand-ins, though, are… well, obvious. I know this is a show for kids, but I'm pretty sure even as a kid, I would have found these wands, spheres, and dials too chunky and plasticky to think of as truly magical. That's something that often bothers me about Precure, too, so this problem isn't unique to Doremi, but still. Sailor Moon, I felt, always had a good balance of magical items that sure were just as toyetic and grossly marketable as Doremi's, but also had a certain elegance and pomp to them that felt more appealing. These just feel like dollar store toys filled with rainbow ping pong balls to me. Heck, the notes that play when Doremi summons her wand and broom even sound like they're coming out of a tiny toy speaker. Other than that, it's mostly minor gripes. Doremi's parents fight all the time, and this is portrayed as just a quirk of her family life and not something to be maybe just a little worried about, so that's a bit uncomfortable to watch with modern eyes. Majorika seems like a bit of a one-note mentor so far, pretty much always angry and or flustered and not much else, so I'm hoping they do more with her character as the series progresses. Plus. As sweet and genuine as the show's writing is, it's still clear that the demographic they're aiming for is quite young, so it can be tough to stay interested as an adult viewer in some spots. Still, those points aside, I think these episodes show pretty clearly that the fans who kept telling me about Ojamajo Doremi were onto something. I can very much see how this setup would lend itself well to fleshing out these characters and their world over time while providing tons of fun hijinks and wild character animation along the way. It's no wonder this series was such a hit in its day, and why so many fans are nostalgic for the kind of pure, unfiltered, magical joy it offers. 
I can't say how fast I'll be able to watch more of the show, considering how many other long-running Magical Girl series I need to watch for Maho Profile, but I can say for sure that I'll be looking forward to more the next time I get a chance. Thank you all for watching! Happy Lucky Minna ni todoke! Thanks so much again to all my patrons who support me every month, especially Author X, Icicle Prism, Lavitz, Otaku no Podcast, and Outcats Nya! And as always, Rally Vincent deserved better, and the best transformation phrase is still Tekumaku Mayakon! Tekumaku Mayakon! Goki Genyo, motherfuckers! I wouldn't be doing this if not for the generous support of viewers like you. You can support me on Patreon for as little as a dollar a month at patreon.com slash You can make small one-time donations at ko-fi.com slash Or you can always share this video and leave a like or comment to show your support. Thanks so much again, and have a good day! Goodbye!